Оли Лукое by Hans Christian Andersen. Friday. It's astonishing how many older people are anxious to get hold of me, said Оли Лукое, especially those whose consciences are bothering them. Good little Оли, they say to me, we can't close our eyes. We lie awake all night, facing our weak deeds, which sit on the edge of our beds like ugly little fiends, and soak us in hot perspiration. Won't you come and turn them out, so that we can have a good night's sleep? At that they sigh very deeply. We will be glad to pay you for it. Good night, Ollie. The money lies on the window sill. But I don't do things for pay, said Oli Lukoya. What are we going to have tonight? Little Hjalmar asked. I don't know whether you would like to go to a wedding again tonight, but it's quite different from the one last night. Your sister's big doll, who looks like a man and is named Hermann, is to be married to the doll called Berta. It's Berta's birthday too, so there will be no end to the presents. Yes, I know, Hjalmar told him. Whenever the dolls need new clothes, my sister either lets them have a birthday or hold a wedding. It must have happened a hundred times already. Yes, but tonight is the hundred and first wedding. And with the hundred and one, things come to an end. That's why it's to be so splendid. Oh, look! Hjalmar looked over at the table. There he saw a little pasteboard house with the windows alight and all the teen soldiers presenting arms in front of it. The bridal couple sat on the floor and leaned against the table leg. They looked thoughtful and with good reason. Oli Lukoya, rigged out in grandmother's black petticoat, married them off. When the ceremony was over, all the furniture in the room sang the following fine song, which the pencil had written. It went to the tune of the soldier's tattoo. Let us lift up our voices as high as the sun in honor of those who today are made one. Although neither knows quite what they have done, and neither one quite knows who's been one. Oh, wood and leather go well together, so let's lift up our voices as high as the sun. Then they were given presents, but they had refused to take any food at all, because they planned to live on love. Shall we go to a summer resort or take a voyage? The bridegroom asked. They consulted the swallow, who was such a traveler, and the old setting hen who had raised five broods of chicks. The swallow told them about the lovely warm countries, where grapes hang in great ripe bunches, where the air is soft and where the mountains have wonderful colors that they don't have here. But they haven't got our green cabbage, the hen said, who was in the country with all my chicks one summer and there was a sand pit in which we could scratch all day. We also had access to a garden where cabbages grew. Oh, how green they were! I can't imagine anything lovelier. But one cabbage looks just like another, said the swallow, and then we so often have bad weather. It is cold here, it freezes. That's good for the cabbage, said the hen. Besides, it's quite warm at times. Didn't we have a hot summer four years ago? For five weeks it was so hot that one could scarcely breathe. Then too, we don't have all those poisonous creatures that infest the warm countries. And we don't have robbers. Anyone who doesn't think ours is the most beautiful country is a rascal. Why he doesn't deserve to live here? The hen burst into tears. I have done my sharing of traveling and once made a 12-mile trip in a coop, and there is no pleasure at all in traveling. Isn't the hen a sensible woman, said Berta, the doll. I don't fancy traveling in the mountains, because first you go up and then you go down. No, we will move out by the sand pit and take our walks in the cabbage patch. That settled the matter.